Welcome to the first game salad tutorial that I'm making for you. These series of tutorials will guide you through the basic functions of game salad uh, so that you have the skills that you will need to design and create your own individual game later in the semester. Everybody's going to create a very similar looking game to begin with. Um, and the first thing you're going to need to do is to bring into the uh, the li media library here, all of the files, the image files, and all of the uh, audio files that I've given you. They will be wherever you've downloaded them, probably in a downloads folder, a series of graphics files and a sound file. Select them all and bring them into Game Salad. Uh, most of the file sizes you can see here are quite small, 32 by 32 pixels. That's a small sound file, uh, small image file. And that's quite suitable for our reasonably small screen size that we're using. Game Salad defaults to an iPhone screen size. And that's a good choice for us to begin with because it will give us plenty of room on the screen here, the large uh, complete screen, to be able to view all the windows in Game Salad. Later on, you can choose whatever device you wish, and therefore, uh, obviously, an iPad or a tablet screen size will be considerably larger, and you'll have more real estate to work with. So I've brought in my actors. You can also now bring in the audio files as well. You can generate audio files yourself using free software such as Audacity. You can record your own voice, you can do your own sound effects. There are a number of websites that are available too where you can download these nice little compact OGG files, OGG files for use in your games. Now we need, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is go over here to the scene tab and we're going to create six scenes. We need a menu screen. Think of a screen as a scene rather as a screen. We're going to need four screens or scenes <laughs> for our four games. Now our first game is kind of a whack-a-mole or a whack-a-monster kind of a game. We have a rolling game, a physics generated game. We have a missing number game. And we have a sort of a chasing, avoiding kind of a game. It doesn't really matter what you call them just so long as you know what they're referring to. And the very last scene is going to be our game over scene. Okay, off to the menu. Now we're going to create a background in our menu. So in order to do so, we're going to create an actor and it's going to be for the background. Now for this, I'm going to add in from the library, we will have, if I create an actor, there it is, called actor one. When I click on Actor 1, I'm going to change the name. I'm going to call it Background so that I know. And then we can drag down whatever image files we like into this bottom panel here. And that's where we can edit our background. So in the image files, there are two blue ones. There they are. So I'm going to drag this one down first, drop it in. And this I'm now working on the background actor. The original files are still there in the library and they're untouched and their properties won't change. I'm now creating a new one called background and the properties of this one will change. And the first property I want to change about this background actor is that I want it to animate. I want it to flick between the two blue images we have to give it that strobe effect that you've already seen. So I need to find the animate behavior. There it is. Drag, drop. You see how I open up the Backstage tab by clicking on this button on the side here? The Backstage tab here, the Backstage window, is where all of the attributes and controls, if you like, of your actors um, can be defined. So in the Animate window that's now open, I'm now going to change the background to be able to animate. So I grab these two images, drop them into here, choose a frame rate, frames per second, how quickly it will animate. I'm going to suggest single digits. If you go higher than that, it's likely to give me an epileptic seizure. And now that background it now has an animate attribute. So if I bring this, sorry, if I go up to this tab here, bring this actor now into 
the screen, resize it appropriately. That's why my mouse misbehaves. Resize it appropriately so it fits the whole screen. Looks good. And now I can give a bit of a preview to see what it looks like. And that's animating, I think, at a reasonable bit rate. Like I say, any faster than that, and it's just going to be annoying. Your goal is not to annoy the user of the game. Your goal is to actually get them intrigued and get them playing your game. Okay.